Hey, and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is AP Calculus. We are working through uh, Chapter 4 in the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy Calculus book, uh, third edition, I believe. Um, this is the chapter that does applications of derivatives. Uh, we are we've talked about all of the rules for derivatives. Now we're actually doing stuff with it. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, in section 4.2, uh, we spent a, a fair amount of time on the last video talking about the mean value theorem. Uh, we did not get to antiderivatives, so we're going to do that in a separate video, this one. And uh, then we'll pop back and do some more examples of mean value theorem because it's a little more interesting. So uh, an antiderivative, uh, it's not against a derivative, but what it does is it uh, well, let's read it first. It says a function f of x in, is an antiderivative if, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of f of x, if, uh, the, the little prime got blended there, if its derivative is equal to the original function. Okay, so that uh, didn't really sound much better to me. So a function is an antiderivative if you take its derivative and you get the a function back. In other words, here's a better way to say it, uh, it undoes the derivative. It's kind of like the idea of inverse of derivative, uh, only it's, you know, you're, we're not really switching x and y, but it does undo the derivative. Okay, so here, here's a quick example. If, uh, let's say I just, I have some function f of x is x squared. Well, if I do f prime of x, it's going to be 2x. Okay, so now let's go, you know, take it the opposite way. Let's say I have some function 2x, and the antiderivative of 2x would be x squared. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so, yeah, sorry, you can't really answer me where I hear you. Um, okay, so when we did the derivative, we got 2x. When I undo the derivative, I get x squared going from 2x. So there, it's undoing each other. Okay, so here, here's that idea that that I can go back and forth. Okay, so um, now one quick little note here, which ends up being kind of a big deal, is when you're doing the antiderivative, there, there's the issue of a constant in here. So, so for instance, what if I told you, no, I don't think the antiderivative of 2x was x squared. I think it was x squared minus 3. And if I do the derivative of x squared minus 3, I get 2x, and the derivative of that constant is 0. So, I mean, that works. I mean, how can you deny that the antiderivative of 2x isn't, I mean, how could you deny that it was x squared minus 3? Or maybe I could say uh, the antiderivative of 2x is x squared plus 17. Well, again, the derivative here would be 2x pl uh, plus 0, so just 2x. Okay, so, so here's the catch, because there's always a catch. The antiderivative of 2x, we would say, is x squared plus c. In other words, there could be a constant that we don't know about. Sometimes we have to go find that constant. I don't think we're doing that quite yet, but it is possible. Okay, so I need you to be aware and that any time you do an antiderivative, there could be a constant. So we have to represent it with a plus c. Okay, so that's going to be a big deal, and it's going to be hard to remember. I'm just going to tell you that now. Okay, Let, let's do another example. Okay, so let's say f of x, uh, and, and we're saying that um, the antiderivative of f of x is, we're going to call it capital F. So in other words, f, capital F prime is lowercase f. Okay, so what if cap, uh, f of x was cosine? I want to know what the antiderivative is. Okay, so you need to be thinking in your head, what did we take the derivative of. Okay, so the derivative of what is cosine? Okay, and so honestly, it's just now we need to know those same rules, all of those rules that we knew before, we still need to know, we just need to know them backwards. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, and then again, there could have been a constant. 
Okay. What if uh, f of x is, uh, let's do uh, secant x tangent x. So the antiderivative would be, well, what do you take the derivative of to get secant tangent? Okay, plus c. So there could be a constant there. Okay, so the, again, the idea is you need to know the rules forward and backwards. Okay, okay so let, let's do the same exact idea. List all functions with the given derivative. Okay. So let's say um, f of x equals x squared minus 7. Okay. So what I'm saying is this is the derivative. This is the derivative. What did we take the derivative of? Okay. So what we're going to do is try and figure out what it was. Now remember if we're talking about power functions Okay, so again, I'm doing antiderivative. Okay, sorry. It, if, if we're doing power functions, remember what happens. Um, so if I have y equals a times uh, x to the n, y prime equals a times whatever, you know, the exponent times that, and then we do subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, well, if that's true, if we're going to go backwards, we have to add 1 to that exponent. Okay, so in other words, for this exponent, I need to add 1. So this is going to become x to the third. Now, let's just take a second and think about this. If I do the derivative of x to the third, I'm going to have to bring that out in front, so this is going to be 3x squared. I don't see a 3 here. So it had to divide out somewhere. It had to have divided out with a 3. So I need to put a 3 here. So now, now think about what's happening. If I do 3 times x to the second, and then I have that 3 down here in the bottom, then the 3's will divide out. Okay, just, just stop for a second and do that derivative. Make sure it works. Okay, minus. Well, what did we take the derivative of to get 7? Well, it's really a power rule again. It's just there's no x here, so I guess there had to have been an x here. Think about what's the derivative of minus 7x. And then there's that last issue. There could have been some other number there that we're not aware of. And this is actually a way to list all of the functions. And, and the idea is that this constant value, we don't know what that is. It could take on many, many values. Okay. All right, let's do one more of these. <laughs> All right, so here's the, here's the question. How do you end up with something in the denominator? It doesn't have a power, so we're not talking about a power rule with a negative exponent. It had to have actually come from this. Or some of you would just remember uh, y equals natural log of x, so y prime is 1 over x. It's just it's not over just x this time. Okay, so again, we have a lot of trig rules, a lot of log and exponential rules. We have a, a whole bunch of rules, okay? So the antiderivative of f of x would then be the natural log of x plus, sorry, x plus 2. Now let's just double check that. If I do the derivative of this, okay, so f prime, it would be 1 over x plus 2, and then I'd have to multiply by whatever the derivative of the inside was, which is 1. Yep, we're good. The only other thing is plus a constant. Okay. All right. What I'd like to do now is go back and do a couple examples, or at least one example, from the mean value theorem. Okay, so this is that was antiderivatives. Okay, so buzzing right along. Okay. Okay, I lied. Uh, we're going to instead find places where the function, it, we're going to look for maximums and minimums, and uh, also uh, where the functions are increasing and decreasing. Okay, I forgot about those 
uh, theorems in this section. So we're going to pop and do that a little bit. Okay, so let's let's start with uh, x squared minus four. Now, things that uh, you know, we have a couple of things uh, that we've talked about a little bit. Okay, remember that we have the extreme value theorem. And it says uh, that if we're on a closed interval, then there is a maximum and there is a minimum. It has to be a closed, uh, sorry, closed continuous interval. There, and there is a maximum and minimum. Things that also we've talked about is uh, interval, uh, extremes happen at critical points or endpoints. Okay, that's where the extremes happen. Okay, and we've also talked about um, functions are increasing when the slope is bigger than zero, in other words, positive, and functions are decreasing when the slope is less than zero, or in other words, negative. So what we're going to do is uh, kind of look at uh, some specific examples of where all of this is going on. Okay, so here's y equals x squared minus 4. Um, what I want to know is where, uh, where the extremes are and also where uh, increasing or decreasing. And now we did this in pre-calc, but the problem is, but when we did this in pre-calc, we actually just kind of looked at the graph and eyeballed things. Okay, well here what we're going to do is uh, what the book would say use analytic methods. In other words, use calculus. Okay, so here's the deal. We don't have any endpoints. We're not on an interval, so, so that doesn't really help us. Um, but we can find critical points. Critical points, remember, are where the derivative equals zero or the derivative doesn't exist. Well, this is a continuous smooth curve, so the derivative is going to exist everywhere. So let's let's find y prime. So 2x uh, and then derivative of 4 is 0. So all I'm going to do is set 2x equal to 0, and that happens at x equals 0. Okay, now if I put that back in the equation, 0, and then I put that back in here, 0 squared minus 4 is negative 4. So this point needs to be either a max or a min, or it could be uh, something called an inflection point. Uh, an inflection point is uh, a, a point on the graph that goes kind of like wee, something like that. All right, so I will tell you that it's not that. And, and you should know that based on just the shape of this graph, too. Okay. All right, so um, let's now find out uh, where it's increasing and decreasing. Okay, so I, I'm going to make a little table. I just think it's easier to keep track of what's going on. Okay, I'm going to make a table of what's going on with f prime. Okay. I know that at x equals 0, f prime is 0. So I'm going to look, and, and this, is called, this is called a sign chart, and points to the left of 0, okay, so I'm, you could write x less than 0, or if you want to write interval notation, you could say from negative infinity to 0, and then on the right of this, what I'm going to do is look at uh, values of the derivative for this. Okay, so I'm going to take values like this uh, to the left of 0, and I, I, sorry, like this, and actually just put them in here. Okay, so pick a value, okay, because the only place it changes is at x equals 0. Pick a value to the left of 0, so like negative 2. Well, if I put negative 2 in here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. I know it's negative there. Okay, so all I did was 2 times negative 2, and I know that all of the values to the left of 0 will give me a derivative that's negative. Pick a value to the right of 0, like maybe positive 2. It doesn't have to be. Uh, well, those values are now positive. Okay, so here, here's the picture I need you to see. When the derivative is negative, it's going down. It's decreasing. When the derivative is positive, it's going up. It's increasing. Well, if, if on the left side of that it's decreasing and on the right side of that it's increasing, then what's going on in the middle has to be a minimum. So if I'm switching from decreasing to increasing, that thing in the middle has to be a minimum. 
Okay, so we can answer this question now. We have a minimum of negative 4 located at x equals 0. I know that f is decreasing when x is to the left of 0, and I know that f is increasing when x is to the right of 0. And that's what this question asked. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do one more example uh, where we're looking for extremes and increasing and decreasing. And so first up, we need to look at the derivative. Okay, well, this is kind of ugly to use uh, to do derivative of as it is, so we're going to rewrite that as x to the negative 2. So now I can do a power rule, and so negative 2 times x to the negative third. Okay, the point of doing the derivative it here is I want critical points. And remember, critical points are anywhere this equals 0. Well, that's negative 2 over x cubed equals 0. If I multiply both sides by the denominators, denominator, uh, this ends up being 0 times x cubed. So that's 0, and obviously that doesn't have anything useful. Okay, But critical points, so critical points also happen when the derivative does not exist. Uh, problems with the domain, things like that. And x would make x equals zero would make the denominator zero. That's a problem. Okay, so the only critical point I have here is zero, and even if I go back to the original function, that's undefined. Okay, so I know that the derivative doesn't exist at zero. There are no other endpoints on this, so there is actually no max or min for this. Maximums and minimums happen at critical points. Well, the only critical point doesn't exist. It's not a point. And then uh, also uh, maximums and minimums can happen at endpoints, and there are no endpoints except for this place where x equals 0, and, and there's no point for to be a maximum or minimum. Okay, So we're going to look to the left of 0 and to the right of 0. Sorry, it happened to be 0 again, but that is what it is. So pick a value to the left of 0, like maybe a negative 2. I don't know, I feel a pattern coming on here. If I put this in to the derivative, okay, so negative 2 over negative 2 cubed. Well, negative 2 cubed is actually po is negative, so this ends up being a negative over a negative. Overall, that's positive. On the right side, if I put in positive 2, so again, that was negative 2 over positive 2 cubed. That's negative 2 over 8, so that's uh, negative over, whoop, sorry. No, that's right. Hang on, I got this good. Okay, so then this is negative. Okay, so let, let's just do, uh, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and do my summary here. Since this is positive, that means it's increasing. It's going up. Since this is negative, it's decreasing, going down. So this is increasing as x is to the left of 0 and decreasing as x is to the right of 0. just want to take one second here and do a little sketch of this graph. Well, let's do it in blue. If I do a little sketch of this graph, I need it to make sense with what I just said. And here it is, increasing on the left side and decreasing on the right side, and I don't see a max or a min. Okay? All right, so uh, not enough time to do another example of the mean value theorem this time. We're just going to call it a day, and thanks for watching. Bye.